It's my pleasure to introduce our uh, moderator and our speakers. Our moderator today is Renato Simonelli. He's president of Geopark Quadrilatero Ferifero, uh, which is a member of the SDSN network. We also have speaking with us today, Eden Olivares Castro, who is Irma's lead point of contact for stakeholders and indigenous rights holders across the Americas and the Caribbean. With his technical mining engineering experience and personal connection to Latin America, having been born and raised in Colombia, Adam is passionate about improving socio-environmental issues with respect to mining. We're also thrilled to have Maria Emilia Enriquez. She's a member of the faculty of the Institute of Legal Sciences at the Federal University of Pará. She's also a professor at the Graduate Program of Law and Development uh, in Amazonia. And she does research on green economics, mining and sustainable development, regional development, and the bioeconomy. She holds a PhD in sustainable development from the University of Brasilia. Thank you so much again for joining us. And Renato, you may begin. Okay. Uh, hello, all. Uh, good early morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are based. Uh, speakers and audience have consolidated the series of webinars, Visions to SDG Mining Territories, as a reference of contents, concepts, and fundamentals. We will be preparing a collection of these webinars for the mining territories and mining opportunities uh, soon. The webinar of today marks the transition of visions to SDG to mining territories to a new set of webinars and round, and round tables that convey to pathways to mining and territory sustainability, assessment and governance. Welcome the speakers, Professor Maria Mary Henriquez, Federal University of Pará in the Amazon region, Brazil, city of Belém, and Adam Olivares Castro, responsible mining assurance, IRMA, regional lead, Americas and the Caribbean. Lauren, many thanks for the introduction and for our partnership in implementing the network under SDSN, Sustainable Development Solution Network. The platform Visions to SDG Mining Territory has been very successful in the introduction and discussion of new concepts and proposals. Good morning to the audience that in all webinars has supported the development of the titles proposed. The webinar Visions to SDGs in Mining Territories of today we examine the tension between the short-term expectations of the territorial actors, communities, government stakeholders, and the long-term objectives and projections of the mining companies. How governance can be a pathway is highlighted, how it can build trust, joint solutions, better future prospectus, and the alignment of risk perceptions between the two sides. The future may hide risks like water shortage, safety and discontinuity of production as examples. I wish you all a very productive, discussive and learning webinar. Thank you. We're now gonna to turn to Maria Emilia. Give me just one second and I will get your slides up. There we go, begin when you're ready. Yes, well, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Lauren. Congratulations for the very, very good engagement and enforce yes, the SDSN. I, I have a good, a good news because uh, right now the University Federal of Pará, where I am based, uh, is engaged now in SDSN, and uh, you propose our affiliated. I'd like to thank you very much for Renato Simonelli for the invitation, and congratulations also Renato for very brilliant work he has done in the Quadrilateral Ferrifero, and my colleague Adam for the beautiful region in British Columbia. Well, I take about the, I, I, I ask some help for Lauren. I don't know why my screen is not rolling, but Lauren, could you please help me? Okay, uh, next please. Well, uh, no, no, I think that there, there, there was, one before, not not one before. Ah, okay, uh, because it, it is an uh, older version. Well, I'd like, first of all, before starting uh, to talk about uh, governance and territory, I'd like to highlight three points important. First of all, the, to understand the importance of governance nowadays is essential to understand what is the relationship between mining and development. 
and you have uh, some key points uh, for 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 some uh, some uh, vision. The economic perspective is dominant, so the mining is a very uh, engine for promote development. But you have uh, the the second point that I'd like to highlight: this uh, intrinsic characteristic of mining, which uh, are the, you you try to resume uh, in seven dimension. This intrinsic characteristic tend to degenerate what is very classic you know in mineral economic that is resource course. And the basic is the, the dimension, the three the three points I would like to highlight as the initiative considered the good practice. What 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 can I do? in order to uh, counteract the descendants of resource course. So let's start, Lauren, please. Uh, well, the, the, the main uh, dominant vision is, uh, which stresses the, the economic dimension, is that the mining, the, the new investment in mining generate jobs, local income, tax, new investment, it increases GDP. So the mining is a circular uh, development, uh, the grow, uh, the grow through uh, directly to development. This development of the region, the territory is a natural consequence of the, the mining investment. This vision was predominant uh, uh, especially for for World Bank uh, in the 17s and 18s, but there was a critical vision, especially uh, from the South. Please uh, next uh, loading uh, the 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 South. Uh, it, it started in the middle of uh, 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 next please the the 50s that the, the, the mining could degenerate for a course. Uh, the new investment mine generate limited amount of employee tax, employment tax and local income, not, not address all the local necessity or all the local uh, uh, region necessity. And the, also there was leakage because Neither this all this employment is from this region. Other region uh, take advantage for the opportunity. So it, you have leakage in the effect, and the social economic externality increases also. There are an impact in GDP, but not necessarily in the development. So mining, it depends of the balance between. Uh, how can you uh, manage the externality, the leakage, and the opportunity could uh, evolve to development or could develop, develop for resource course? This, this literature about resource course started in the 60s, especially which uh, David Kaufman uh, said the resource course 1.0. Uh, David Kaufman is the former uh, president of Natural Resource Institute Governance. And they, 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 they said the, the different resource course. And the first one in the 60 is linked to uh, Dutch disease. Uh, but the second, the, the resource course is 2.2, uh, incorporate what uh, his he calls the soft governance, the, uh, the necessity that the mining publish what they pay, uh, the transparency, the accountability, the social participation uh, it, it is very, very important in order to evolve to development. So they, they put, they, they call also resource security 3.0 in the beginning of 2000 that uh, he called TEP plus Troika uh, is soft governance uh, in, in questions about the crisis of democracy, conflict, climate crisis. And they also recently what they, 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 they call uh, resource cost 
4.0. Next, next one, please. So the relationship between mining and development is, is intrinsically linked with the, the governance in the, the main characteristics of the mining, which it could degenerate for development or a course. What kind, what, what's the attribute of the mining uh, is intrinsic that could provoke a course? First of all, it's uh, loc locational rigidity. Locational rigidity, uh, the mining has to compete with other forms of use of the territory. It's that uh, a dispute sometimes for water, for land, for local, for leisure, for uh, protected areas. The, the second is a non-renovability of this deposit. Deposit mining is a finite resource, so it depends of the how the the the, the life of the deposit. Uh, how can we manage it? The, 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 the source of the income during the, this life of deposit. Sometimes deposit is shorter, shorter, and the grade is shorter, and you have no enough time to promote the transition for another kind of economic. And the, together, this, this attribute is the uh, capital intensive nature of the mining in more and more. For example, in my state, Pará state in the north of Amazonia, the less the, the less project, the iron ore project in Valley, the the you the, the hiring of the, 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 the jobs is the half of it was in the beginning of the 80s, because it, the 4.0 industry. And together with this, the net naturally of boom and bust, for example, in Yari or in the uh, less in 2000. Uh, 22, if I'm not wrong, the, the peak of the price is $210 per ton, and right now is $100. So it's a cycle of like a holocaust. It's so difficult to manage the, the income from this uh, activity. It, the, the, the potential uh, uh, to trigger distributive conflict because it, 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 it could induce uh, the, the sex uh, characteristics, the rent seeking behavior, the different uh, groups uh, fight to uh, increase its sharing of the benefit of the mining in the potential to generate high uh, impact, the environmental impact. Next, please, uh, uh, Lauren. So, I, in briefly, uh, could you? Uh, you have just uh, 15 minutes, maybe it's not enough to explore it uh, deeply, but uh, the, 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 our goal is to show that all these characteristics is, is very, very well studied by literature, and you have the, the, the good part of the story, you have a contract, you have a good practice, how could a good governance could manage this problem which promotes the, the, the resource course. Uh, uh, please, uh, the, the local, locational rigidity, you, you're talking about the dispute of the conflict. The contract for this is zoning, ecological economic zoning. Uh, what, what the, the spaces must be uh, mining? It must not. If you have, for example, a special ecological area, no goes on. It's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's occur. It's, I have an example in my state. And give, uh, please, Laurie, uh, give the opportunity for well, the, the good of the use of the territory. Uh, Laurie, please, uh, you go, go to promote, the, uh, it, it, it to create a new opportunity to promote the, other economic activity, good institution in order to create, for example, infrastructure. It's not to serve just the mining, but the other uh, uh, community in local in the region as a whole next to work. And the explore the ways to collaborate with local activity. You saw, uh, fortunately, this these three characteristics increasing, especially in new projects, 
you can see it in Brazil, especially after the disaster in Mariana and Brumadinho. Uh, next, please. Uh, the, the activity is subject to social, uh, no, next, next uh, the, I, I think, I think to go, to go faster. I think it may be uh, Becky, Becky Lauren. Uh, next, okay. Uh, because you, you can talk about the, the examples, examples of uh, the, the, the rigidity, especially, I, I think next one, next one, please. Uh, next, next. Next, please. I I I tell it after, because I, I give some examples examples. This is this is examples of zoning in my state in beginning of two thousand. Uh, there are a, a very huge bauxite project in in north of Brazil, but I state here in the in the map, and uh, it was created a special protected area. This project was at Rio Tinto and the, the government and the company decided not go, no, no mining zone because it's a special uh, preserved area, especially ecological area. But you have, uh, next please, you have an example, for example, in Kiruna, in Switzerland, uh, all the town was changed because of the, the mining. Uh, the, the society decide it's important the money go ahead and they change completely the, the, the city for this. Another, another example is in, in Mexico, one city that con uh, next please uh, that live together, the mining is, is very old in the, in the region of uh, San Pedro Sierra uh, San Pedro. Uh, in the in in Mexico, uh, in, in in they decide uh, until the mining is is continued. So uh, I I'd like to stress that it's depend of the governance to decide what is no go zone or what it must uh, mobilize to the in, in favor to the mining. Next, please. Uh, the second thing is non renewable of the positive. Um, uh, the, the useful life of my, mine is short, so sometimes have no time enough to to do the the transition for the the, the other economy. What is the the good the good price for for this? Uh, the good prices next, please. Uh, regional planning or sometimes tax uh, policy. For example, recently UK in the pandemic times, uh, it, when especially after Ukraine war, when the uh, oil and gas increase a lot the price, the UK government imposed a tax for 25% uh, normal profit in order to uh, uh, in, in order to increase its sharing in the benefit of the mining. The, there are the, another example in Australia, in Botswana, in South Africa, but it's not just the case to increase its sharing in participate, but the use it wisely, the use it well. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the other characteristic is a uh, capital intensive. Uh, as I said, uh, mining is, uh, for example, the new project of the valley here in Parai State, SE11B, the, there are lots of uh, automotive uh, activity that, that are not them. Uh, the, all the, the trucks is autonomous and there are lots of uh, less. Each, each, uh, the, the country act, the, the other side is less job, less income less time to do the, the transition. So it's very, very important since the beginning, uh, Laura, could you, could you please? Since the beginning, uh, increase, for example, uh, 
contract of local service, local constraint policy, in order to stimulate other kind of economic, key, which serve not just to mining, but others activity since the beginning, because the, the grade is low and the life expectation is shorter. So it's very important to prepare the economy for the second moment to live without mining. For example, a good example next, Lauren, is the local, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, local employment and the it's local content, local content that are, could be regulatory or could be facilitated in order Lots of mining companies doing it, fortunately, right now. For example, support educational training facility, give fiscal incentives, reward local employment, uh, preference for award uh, locals in mining contract, but it could be mandatory also in the moment of to receive the license, for example, put minimal local employment contract as many countries uh, in Africa is doing right now. Uh, uh, mandatory training requirement, uh, 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 include the people, uh, indigenous women, disadvantaged groups and, and things like this. this that, that are very, very interesting, very success or not, uh, to, to sex, but it's a way, it's a good way. If, if it could, if it is made a good governance, it could uh, surprise some inequality for, now the next, please, for, for example, gen, gender equality in mining. And here in Brazil, just 15% of the employment in mining is women. In other sector, for example, in services, it's at forty-two percent. So we have a long, long way to to go in order to uh, uh, attend this this exigence of uh, equality of gender. Uh, the next one is the boom and bust cycle. Well, as I said, because the inherent price fluctuation. Uh, there are very, very good example. Next, please, uh, Lauren. The, uh, especially in, in mineral funds. It starts for oil and gas. Uh, next, you have this very, very beautiful example uh, in different levels, state levels, country levels, municipal levels. For example, in Brazil, you start put, uh, uh, in, in some uh, cities in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, and here in my state, Canandos Carajás, create a fund which uh, promotes diversification of activity. You have states using Brazil Espírito Santo, create a sovereign fund for state. There, there are a classical fund in Alaska, in Alberta, in Canada, in Alabama, and there are the, the Norway is a better example of the how to apart the, the resource, the, the resource, the financial, in order to better use uh, such money in the future or to prepare the economy to transition for no economics. The, uh, you, you see the interest increasing in this kind of fund, uh, especially to avoid this holocaust effect. Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, the 50. Sorry, Sorry, I'm going to do the next slide, but um, we're coming to the end of your time. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, uh, just in, in order to, to finish, uh, the, the, the conflict, uh, you have a very, very good example, for example, uh, how to share in this, this benefit in red, red dog mine in Alaska. I have no time to show all the, all the benefits, but uh, it's a very good if you are interested in this, just to show uh, the, the sixth point, next please, uh, just to finish, as the, the rent seeking behavior, and it, it, to avoid rent seeking, you have a proposal of EITI initiative. There are very good examples in Botswana, 
uh, and the, in this dimension, we create lots of discussion about how to improve governance in order to avoid this rent seeking, include the very uh, excellent whole of Natural Resource Governance Institute. Next one, please, uh, Lauren. Uh, the, the governance is different pillar, the principle, transparency, accountability, social participation, orientation of consent, responsiveness, efficiency, equity, inclusion, all this principle is very, very important in order to improve the governance. Next one. Uh, all the uh, lots of consensus in, in literature that the good governance convert mineral income in better, and the lack of governance could degenerate in resource costs. And uh, next, this is a very interesting. Uh, the Natural Resource Governance Institute creates a governance resource industry. It's very interesting. Uh, next, please, uh, Lauren, just two, two slides to finish. Uh, they, they, in create, uh, they incorporate three dimensions, the revenue management, oh, next, uh, next. Uh, the government and the value realization. It's very interesting because there are uh, all the indicators to follow the level of the governance of the territory, of the municipality, or in, in the country. And to finish, uh, the, all this, the, some example of the companies doing here in Brazil in order to uh, counteract this tendency of uh, uh, this impact created, the, the social environmental impact. Next, just the three slides, uh, Lauren, please. Uh, this is an example in the left side in uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, mining not use uh, them now after especially the, the disasters in Mariana and Brumadinho. And the, the right side is example of uh, Anglo-American, the use of the waste to pave uh, public vias, and next one, please. You have some example, very interesting. Uh, for example, one uh, Sigma Lithium in Jequitinhonha Valley here in Brazil, create an institute and the voluntarily create a fund to invest in local population. Uh, they focus in social aspects and the environmental aspect. And the, another example is Fundo de Sustentabilidade uh, the hydro here uh, in my state, uh, which uh, reserve uh, uh, 500 million invest in the, the city uh, in different uh, dimensions, just to see some examples. Well, uh, just to finish, uh, uh, there are a strong tendencies that mining, if it left it only the free pay of market force tend to develop resource costs, each in all version, 1.0, 2, 3, and 4. And to, to, to prevent this pathology, there are lots of good examples uh, to strengthen governance, to defend zoning, uh, to, to, to go and not go, uh, to adopt the local content policy, to create founded, to capture and use widely income, uh, uh, mineral income. So uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and I dispose to discuss uh, the, the finish, please. Okay, thank you very much, Lauren, for your assistance. Thank you so much, Maria Emilia. And uh, Adan, please, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thank you, Maria, for, uh, for that great information. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible just to maximize uh, the amount of time we have for uh, questions and answers. So yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, really thankful again for, for the opportunity um, for to briefly discuss uh, what the initiative for responsible mining um, 
assurance is and how it addresses most importantly the long-term challenges uh, related to mining. And just to expand very briefly on, on my role with IRMA, the main focus is essentially raising awareness uh, about the IRMA standard and independent audit system with all stakeholders uh, that IRMA serves uh, in the Americas and the Caribbean um, with the overall aim of coordinating mutual and, and collective work. Um, so for those of you that do not know about IRMA, uh, it is a voluntary initiative that developed a comprehensive standard that aims to cover every indicator relevant to mining. It is applicable to industrial scale mines uh, at the mine site level, not uh, company wide. Uh, and IRMA also manages the system of third party independent audits uh, of mines that measure against the standard. Uh, the audits are based on 400 plus requirements. Um, and uh, which that formed the IRMA standard, uh, which civil society participated and contributed over the 12 year development period of the initiative and the standard. Uh, a key component of an IRMA audit is that IRMA approved third party auditors travel to the mine site and meet uh, with multiple stakeholders who are affected by the mine. Uh, auditors take all, pers all, all stakeholders' uh, perspectives into consideration when uh, measuring a mine's performance uh, against the requirements of the standard. And uh, our mission is, is, is fairly simple, but one that is obviously quite complex, uh, and that's to protect people and the environment directly affected uh, by mining. Uh, we're an organization that is led by an um, equal multi-stakeholder board. Uh, so essentially we use an equitable governance model, and this means that each group that is part of the IRMA board of directors has equal value and voice in, in all decision-making processes. And just uh, to build on the previous slide, um, these are the six groups that form the IRMA governance uh, structure and uh, our current board members. Uh, IRMA members essentially elect a board representatives for their respective group. Uh, it is the person that forms part of the board rather than the company as a whole. Uh, board members strive, of course, to make decisions by consensus. Uh, where they cannot achieve this, however, uh, they agree to vote. Uh, and any vote that results in two no votes from the same group um, it does not pass, and the issue must go back to all six groups for further discussion uh, and resolution. So this means that a topic cannot pass if one of the stakeholder groups is fundamentally opposed. Uh, focusing on, on the main topic uh, of this webinar, it's, it's important to acknowledge that volunteer initiatives can never replace laws that all operators need to follow. Um, at best, a, a volunteer initiative can, can be a best practice standard um, that helps provide a template and, and increase stakeholder support for stronger laws and, and oversight. Volunteer initiatives, uh, I think, have, have the capacity to build relationships with various stakeholders uh, that, that's based on mutual trust and respect. However, to, to accomplish this, there is a need for the initiative or standard to, to have this equal multi-stakeholder governance structure that I've mentioned. This does not just mean that stakeholders from uh, civil society or indigenous rights holders participate in decision-making processes but most importantly, have equal power, uh, voting power when making decisions. Uh, this, is, this is one of the key factors that makes IRMA different than any other voluntary initiative or standard in the planet. Um, initiatives and standards that, that have transparency uh, at their core, which is something that's talked a lot um, in this space, I think it demonstrate, we demonstrate that transparency by publicly noticing audits and publicly sharing results to support community and worker engagement, uh, which has a key role in starting to build trust with mining impacted civil society, um, including, of course, indigenous rights holders, and also contributing towards meaningful um, mining and community engagement. 
Uh, the IRMA standard and, and independent audit system, uh, I think are a tool that one, increase access to information uh, on the impacts of currently operating mines and also support essentially you, everybody that's, that's here that's working on these issues uh, and having an informed base to ask for improvements. Uh, and second, to assess the potential impacts of uh, new proposed mines as well. Uh, Irma is, uh, a, a unique, is, is unique, as, as I've started to mention, uh, in that compared to other voluntary initiatives um, or, or standards that look at mining, uh, we are not an industry-led initiative. Uh, historically, there has been a large focus as well on certification, and that key word essentially meaning a tangible document that is printed in frame. Uh, Irma slightly shifts away from that in that it places a focus uh, on the real issue, and that is essentially uh, instilling um, a continuous improvement mentality and more than anything, verification process. Um, and, and this occurs unless, of course, all 400 plus requirements are fully met, in which case we do have a designation that is that is certification. Uh, this approach, as mentioned, fo focuses on the big picture rather than a piece of paper to hang up on a wall. Um, and IRMA is also the only uh, mining initiative with, with, with the equivalent governance model, uh, just to emphasize that, and we're the only standard actively reaching out to affected communities uh, to encourage them to use the IRMA system as a tool to drive more responsible business practices uh, and also to train and support uh, communities on how to do this. Um, we're still new, of course, and, and, and since most other systems are industry led, many indigenous communities uh, or just mining impacted communities in general aren't fully aware of IRMA and they're skeptical, of course, that the private sector won't just try to use it for continued greenwashing. Uh, so on behalf of IRMA, we need to earn that trust, of course, and hold our own system accountable. Uh, here, I wanted to just you know briefly show that the makers of electric vehicles, renewable energy, are hearing community and NGO concerns about mining's impacts. Um, I think they're sensitized to this and, and are working uh, to change their sourcing of mine materials. Uh, energy companies, car makers, uh, other purchasers are, are, are pushing mines uh, that they buy minerals from uh, to be audited against the IRMA standard and to be more transparent about the impacts and to show, most importantly, measurable improvement in the near term. And we understand the risks of, of, of companies, uh, as I mentioned, using IRMA as a, as a greenwashing strategy. And the best way for us to address this concern is, is by encouraging uh, people to, to read the completed auto reports on our website and see for yourself um, that our auto system is not simply a check mark and is in fact a rigorous process. Um, we have also received increased recognition by government authorities uh, this includes the European Parliament, uh, the US government, uh, and the latest being the Chilean government, which has referenced IRMA in the country's national lithium strategy as a framework to initiate a process of dialogue and participation with stakeholders impacted by lithium mining. Just last slide here uh, to give people very much an idea of, of the impact IRMA is having. Uh, here are just some uh, statistics that um, of, of mine sites measuring against the standard. Uh, globally, we have 94 mine sites registered in the system, 58 of which are self-assessing against the standard. 21 mine sites are piloting the draft exploration or mineral processing um, standards and 15 are in the independent uh, assessment system, meaning that either these 15 mines uh, have an independent audit underway or has been completed. Out of these 16 sites, 12 are currently in, um, in progress and three have uh, been completed and publicly released their reports 
which you can find on the Irma website. Uh, the latest one uh, being Albemarle's salar plant in Chile's Atacama Desert. Um, and uh, mine sites register inner system uh, cover these 29 countries you see here on the slide on the left uh, and combined produced over 50 different uh, materials. Um, as I believe and I saw on the audience there, we, we have some folks from Brazil. I'll, I'll highlight the engagement as well um, of Irma in Latin America. Uh, of these 94 mines registered in our system, 26 are based in Latin America, so just over 25%, um, with one of them uh, being in the Caribbean as well. We uh, anticipate the results of the Barro Alto and Minas Real uh, Brazil sites um, to be released this year. And we also have uh, a couple new sites as well uh, in Brazil uh, that we just announced are going to be measuring against the standard. Uh, and given the trajectory, the increasing trajectory of mines over time, as you can see in the two graphs uh, that are measuring against the standard, we anticipate uh, the standard's influence uh, to continue increasing. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you all so much. Uh, try to keep it as brief as I could there. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely welcome everybody's uh, questions. I'll also post my email on the chat as well in case anybody has any questions. And then I did see as well um, a request to share slides and we'll definitely share those through, through Lauren as well. And just a reminder that this webinar is also being recorded um, so people can always view it as well later on. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're making my job easy. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a couple of questions. I see them coming in through the chat. Please feel free to keep sending them. Um, Renato, I don't know if you want to read them out or if you want me to. Oh, you can read. Great. Well, I'm going to start with uh, a question we have from Carlos Petier. Uh, he's asking Maria, Emilia, uh, and colleagues. Don't you think that all mines must leave a portion of the reserves under production to be used by future generations uh, instead of mining something uh, to depletion? Thoughts on that? Uh, to stop right now, uh, to, to start right now, Laurie? Yeah, yeah, we'll take them Just, one at a time. Okay. So we can start with this, and then uh, if anybody else wants to add something, and we'll go to the next question. It's a good question. Uh, it, it's about the governance because the society has to discuss about this. So for someone, uh, maybe the technology is changing. It's not make. It's not the the case to maintain huge reserves because you don't know. For example, iron ore reserve. You don't know if the technology uses a huge amount of iron ore. So you have to use it. Um, a and the and the, the 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 quick quick question is how to uh, transit uh, for uh, an economic which is the Nazi uh, is sustainable, not a uh, no renewable resource. This is this is a point. How to use wisely the resources, the financial resources from this deposit. Uh, I I my personal view is to maintain the deposit in, especially in in regions that are the special uh, equilibrium ecological because the the subsoil is also important for equilibrium ecological and biodiversity did anybody else want to come in on this question all right we'll go to the next one um, for my two cents, I would say that that's also an interesting question, uh, and I think some people are doing some really interesting and innovative things around the circular economy um, to reduce our need as well for sort of virgin raw materials, uh, and even like some people are doing cool things with um, using mining wastes and tailings to try to uh, pull out more raw materials as the technology improves. We have a question from Bruba Barbazani uh, for Adan asking if there are synergies between Irma and TSM. Yes, that, that's a great question, Bruna. Thank you so much for asking that. And uh, 
that there, of course, there are uh, discussions um, with Mining Association of Canada, who created uh, the Towards Sustainable Mining uh, a standard uh, to ensure that, uh, well, not to ensure, but most importantly, to understand what, uh, you know, how the two standards address uh, various topics related to mining in terms of measuring um, their, their performance. Uh, of course, I think in, in this space, you know, for, for some time, it's been discussed that there's over 158 volunteer initiatives. Uh, we hear the demand from stakeholders uh, of, of having perhaps that consolidated uh, to, to a few standards. So of course, there's, there's been uh, discussion on, on how that could look like, uh, not just with TSM, but also with ICMM, International Council on Mining and Metals, uh, Copper Mark, World uh, Gold Council, uh, kind of the list goes on. At the end of the day, um, for Irma, something that we are not willing to compromise is not having an equal multi-stakeholder uh, governance structure. Um, a lot of other initiatives, including TSM, which is industry-led, um, of course, I mean, we have to recognize that TSM did, did pioneer uh, throughout the uh, early 2000s and 90s uh, how to measure uh, the performance uh, with regards to social, economic, environmental indicators uh, of mining. But at the same time, it's, we're, we're now in a day and age where, where the, the, the demand is more from, from stakeholders. Uh, and to regain and rebuild trust, um, it's, it's paramount that uh, we have standards that advocate for both stakeholders that, that are in favor of mining, that would like better mining practices, but uh, at the same time, there's, there's groups that uh, don't want mining in their backyard. And, and there, there is a massive gap in terms of what tools um, these stakeholders can, can have access to in order to really understand and, and have that, I, I guess I could say, a data-driven decision-making process as well, uh, where they have the information to say, you know what, no, we, we don't want mining uh, for this, this, this reason. This has been independently verified uh, and we stand by our decision. And it's also something that um, stakeholders you know uh, across the world including ourselves here in this in this webinar most of ours us are purchasers you know we all have computers uh we all have vehicles uh you know so it's it's important for us to understand the perspectives of what people go through uh in the global south what uh, the struggles of uh communities in the solar di atacama where a huge chunk of uh, lithium resources are located um, just to be able to, to be on the same page and most importantly, have that constructive dialogue on how we're going to move forward. Did anybody else want to add anything on that? I have one question for both, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen the, the rise of the critical minerals or strategic minerals for, for critical applications. Uh, how do you see the future concerning sustainability uh, with this uh, being so critical? You see, you think that maybe the, the, the society may, may just look for availability or, or you think that maybe they, it, this, this kind of uh, production will be more and more required to be uh, in the forefront of, of sustainability, like green, really being uh, green minerals producers. It's a, a if you very want to address that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just answered some tough. questions in the chat as well. <laughs> it's a very tough question. Uh, at the same time that the mining is the solution, is, is, is the problem because they compete with the other use of the territory. I think uh, all, all, uh, it's an example how the governance uh, discussion of the society, the society might make decision. I, I'm not sure that mining, uh, it, it is, uh, you have to mine all the territory just because it has the deposit. There, there are some territory uh, even has a very good deposit 
it's not to mine because it's, it's special, special for, for biodiversity, special for the society. For example, the conflict for water, for example, uh, if the mining uh, uh, finish the, the resource of the water, uh, how, how can you manage it? Uh, which is more important, the water or the, the mineral? So I have, I, I think it's very, very important to, to zoom it to decide when I can go go it. Obviously, there there was environmental and social impact, and the, you have to Iraq uh, How how can you compensate? How can you avoid? How can you uh, try to mitigate this this impact, but uh, this is this is an, uh, an issue that the society has to decide. Adam. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, I was just uh, replying. There's a couple more questions there on on, on the chat that I wanted to get to before um, summarizing. I mean, yeah, just uh, to, to kind of keep it as general as I can with regards to the sustainability and, and, and water usage. Um, I think we're, you know, stakeholders have this water specifically, water quality, quantity usage is, is pieces of information at the side level that uh, not all jurisdictions, um, you know, have, have uh, a, a fair and accessible um, way for stakeholders to have access to that information, which which is a key driver, uh, of course, of, of, of driving sustainability. Um, so I think there's a lot of work that can be done um, in, in, in various jurisdictions to um, have access to the information um, in, in, in a manner that is uh, that is accessible. In Canada, of course, we have various examples of that through public registries that, that do seem uh, to, to you know, take on a, on, a, on a good way to to have access to the information, but at the same time, now it's coming to a situation where there's thousands of documents in these public registries of, uh, you know, in, in the case of Canada provincial governments uh, that do have, you know, spreadsheets about uh, water quality, how much is it's being used. Um, but it's also addressing that that difficult balance of what is useful and what's kind of noise and how that information is is uh, related to the public. So I think there's there's definitely some work that we can do with that. I'd like to comment to uh, my colleague Irã Machado here. They, they said, I'm sorry to tell everybody that many of them can be considered an exercise of wishful thing. I think, it, well, everything starts for the desire, you know, how I, 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 I know you, you uh, the, 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 there are lots of uh, problems, but the, the, good, the good news is there are some solutions. Uh, and there are lots of uh, literature uh, address show the best practices. I try to show the seven point. Uh, if it, I, I compare it like a uh, uh, animal, savage animal that is necessary to domesticate by governance. If you if you let the mining free free to the 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 norms of the free market. It could degenerate to resource costs. You see lots of examples like this. But if we, if we uh, uh, stay uh, concerned about this possibility, and the, you know what is the not, not, not the case of to use it as a receipt, uh, which was good in Alaska, in British Columbia, in Mexico, you be in Brazil, not, but it inspired. It calls attention the necessity to to prepare, to planning, to involve the society, to control, not to 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 left it free. This is important to call attention for all dimension. All dimension could provoke serious problem, but all dimension was very deeply studied. And there are some recommendations in order to avoid this, this problem. 
Um, we're almost out of time. So unfortunately, I know we didn't get to every single question, but uh, I'm going to suggest that each commenter, uh, you know, leave us with a minute of closing remarks, um, you know, ways that people on the line can get engaged and try to foster better governance of the sector as a whole, um, different roles that maybe you see for uh personal citizens versus governments versus people who are working in companies um, or anything else that you want to address in your last minute. Uh, we'll start with Adan, I think, and then Maria uh, and then Renato to close us out. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it really brief. I mean, we've got three minutes here and I think I've, I've, I've said a, a good chunk of what my closing arguments are, but I think uh, there's, there's, I think we're through this, um, you know, I guess data science era that we're living uh, with everything being digitalized, that the volume of information is just going to keep piling and piling and piling. Uh, so I think it's critical for for people to to do a due diligence and really understand exactly uh, you know for what they're buying and and how uh, what information is out there and how to use it. And, and, and screen out for noise. I think that's the most important message that I can give people. And if the urban standard is is something that is of use, happy to continue discussing. And then if that might, I'd share my contact email uh, there as well. Um, but uh, the reality is for some folks, it's not going to be like that. Uh, Irma may not be the best tool for, for them. And, and, and it's about accepting that and, and, and really having a constructive uh, dialogue to, to keep on building and, and improving. Uh, thank you very much, Lauren, for excellent coordination. Thank you, Renato, Adam, for sharing this table with you. Uh, what I, I sharing with the, with the you is a, a part of a, a research we are doing here at University Federal do Pará in order to uh, look for uh, alternative to avoid resource costs, because you see lots of in, in, in the municipal level, regional level, including in the country level, lots of talking about the that disease, the, the, the industrialization in Brazil. You saw in the territory, for example, in my state, Pará, um, it's more than 50 years in big mining, and the promise is increased development, but you don't see uh, how fast this development comes. So, uh, our research try to collect this good uh, example in order to show what uh, the, the government, uh, the academia, the civil society, the industry can do in order to avoid the, the resource cost. I think the resource cost is a real threat and the, it must be addressed with good governance. This is my final Remarks. Thank you very much for having me in this inspiring seminar. Well, I'll be short. Uh, just send you a message. Let's say that uh, we are very open to create new titles for the webinars. So please be free to suggest us and we can talk again about uh, titles that can be included in the coming webinars. Thank you very much. Thank you again to our wonderful speakers, Renato, Maria, Emilia, and Adan. Thank you to everybody for being with us. Uh, the slides will be posted and the recording as well. Everyone should get that direct to their email, email inbox. Uh, my guess would be maybe Monday. Uh, thank you again, and I wish everybody a great rest of your day and whatever time zone you're joining from. Thank you.